Welcome everyone to a little Lucky Live on a nice Monday afternoon or evening, depending where you are in this great country. Uh, but wherever you are, I hope you're safe and I hope that you are, uh, you know, among your family and you are getting through these challenging times uh, with them. Uh, and then with that being said, like we've announced earlier, Lucky Tackle Box is going to be creating a lot of live content uh, throughout the week, uh, each month to help you guys uh, disconnect a little bit, uh, you know, just so we can, uh, you know, I know that we have a lot of challenges throughout the day, a lot of uncertainties, and we're creating live coverage uh, in, in the fishing industry to help us step away from that and give you guys a little entertainment uh, if just for a short moment. And uh, so yesterday we did a fantastic live show out on the lake uh, with the majority of lakes being closed down all over at least California right now. Um, I have access to a private lake that I was able to go out and we were able to stream live. So we, the whole idea was bringing you guys, the audience with us and having a a day of fishing and it was fantastic it couldn't have gone better and we're going to keep doing that so I, so thank you for the 10,000 people that checked in throughout the two hour live feed we had a great time interacting with you guys and we look forward to uh to improving that every single week and i uh, couldn't be more excited but today we're going to take more of a little bit of the silly approach to, to Monday. And this is going to be, uh, we're going to look at some memes. We're going to look at some funny videos. And then I have a guest coming up here in just a second. Uh, Kevin, the bait man Baxter, a good friend of mine and a tackle expert, a guy that you guys really need to check out if you're trying to step up your fishing game for 2020. Um, but some other things, uh, we're going to take a look at some memes here in a second. And also I want to reiterate our Bass Money LTB challenge. So guys, uh, we're using the hashtag Bass Money LTV, and you guys need to upload a picture of your March baits. Uh, it can be a picture of you fishing with it, or it could just be, I know where a lot of us are constrained to our homes right now. It can be anything creative within our homes that uh, you think is fun and, and that we're going to enjoy. And we're going to take our top five most favorite uh, pictures that, that have used this month's box in some kind of way. And we are giving a hundred dollars to each one of those five winners. So we're giving out 500, uh, $500 in uh, Visa gift cards. So you can go spend that on anything you want. And I know we could all use a little extra cash right now. So, uh, and we're also going to announce one of those winners a little bit later in the show, um, just to get you guys, uh, just to get you guys a little bit more hungry for that money and stuff. And I'm looking forward to announcing this guy because he seems like a pretty cool guy. I'm looking forward to giving him $100. He doesn't know he won yet. I don't even know if he's watching. We'll be uh, notifying him via Instagram. But uh, the hashtag you use, Bass Money LTB. So guys, we're going to take a look at some memes here in a second, some funny little fishing videos. But uh, first, I'm going to introduce uh, the guest that we have on tonight, which I mentioned earlier, Kevin the Baitman Baxter. I've known this guy now for a few years, and uh, he's just he's just a guy that's been uh, that's been sharing his passion, I, which is why I identify with him well, is because the guys that I really uh, resonate uh, or, or resonate with me in the fishing industry are guys that really just love their passion. They're putting out what they like about it, and. Uh, and it just comes across very authentic. And so, uh, Kevin, I appreciate you coming on the channel and hanging out for a little bit tonight. Yeah, man, not a problem. You know, I got to work in a few hours. Uh, like you said, we've been friends for a long time and, and we're friends not, uh, you know, we don't do a lot of business together, but I think that's what makes us good friends is, is we both love fishing and, uh, man, I love baits. So, I haven't got to fish a lot. I know we got some things going on in the United States, but if you can get out there, be socially distant, what better place to distance yourself than on the water and, and learn some new techniques and, and think outside the box. And I just, I just really like sharing information. I can talk to anybody. So I, I'm pumped to uh, help you guys out tonight. Yep. And one, one thing that's great about Kevin and a, the, a point you just made up, you like helping people out. There's no secrets when it comes to Kevin. He's going to tell you anytime he finds out something that if he goes out and slays him on something, uh, a new little technique, he is just as excited. I mean, he's stoked that that happens, but he's just excited to come in and share that information with his audience. And that's what's made his channel grow. That's what's made his popularity uh, really take off is because he's whatever works for him, he's going to transfer over to his audience and help them become better fishermen. And, and that's what it's all about, especially on this YouTube platforms and things is, is spreading that passion for fishing. 
Yeah, and oh, some some sweet. of those things I share, you know, you know, I, you know, Travis knows, but I've been connected, uh, very blessed to be connected with a lot of uh, top fishing pros across the country. And sometimes I show some stuff to like, hey man, you might want to watch putting that on YouTube. I can't have all my secrets out, but uh, someone's going to see it eventually. But people want information, and and that's why I'm just a middleman. I'm transmitting information. Yep. Yep. Well, all right, guys, we're going to get into what we're calling our bedazzled bait challenge. Every angler has some little things they do. Uh, you know, it's before there was Etsy, bass fishermen have been tinkering with their equipment and, and spicing it up. So we are now going to do a, a, a bedazzled bait uh, segment on Mondays where we're going to kind of show some of our uh, bedazzled baits. And you guys, as the audience, are going to vote what you guys think is your what what person wins on their bedazzled baits i'm gonna i have one minute then i'm gonna show three of my bedazzled baits then uh then we're gonna go over to kevin and kevin's gonna show us three bedazzles that he has on his baits and then you as the viewer are gonna let us know who's you like more and we will crown them the champion of bedazzling for this monday so we're gonna we're gonna put a minute on the clock somehow i don't know how we're gonna do that Okay, I'm actually, uh, I am going to put it on the phone here because I'm going to hold you to this minute as well, Kevin. Uh oh. All right, here we go. Are you ready, Kevin? I hope you have a notepad out too, Kevin, because I'm about to show you some secrets, dude. You're going to like what I'm talking about here. I'll just have to get you on one of my streams and you can go crazy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready. I got. I actually got to get all my stuff prepped up here so I can go fast. Uh oh. Go. All right, guys. I a lot of times uh, hand tie my own jigs, um, but one of the most important things, anytime I have a lead head like this and I'm trying to do a little crowd Im crowd out imitation, I dye it pink. I bedazzle that bad boy pink. Very easy. You just heat up the lead, dip it in there, and you've got a bedazzled pink head. The reason I like doing that is because it gives off a crawdad uh, molting color. When they're shedding their skin, they become a little pinkish color, and they're easy targets. Bass love them. That took way too long to describe, though. Another thing is I take my scents, and I pour scent in a little baggie like this, okay? And I can dip my baits in here. Instead of getting all nasty and stuff, I'm able to get my scent all covered in, uh, a bait all covered in scent. It'll slide through the grass as I'm punching and stuff. Also, it tastes good because I got scents, and I'm not all dirty. Last thing is using uh, skirts, little skirt material to stick through your little base, uh, your plastics, and you can give them a little bit more color and a little bit more flange. Finito. All right. That was one minute and 10 seconds. So guess what, Kevin? You get an extra 10 seconds on yours as well. We got to be fair. All right. Well, I I've kind of changed my mind of what I was going to do since we I didn't know we could do something pre-built, but I got something pre-built up here. But uh, you tell me when I can start. Oh, you, you tell me and I'll start it. All right. Uh, so we'll make sure I got all my stuff. All right. Uh, three, two, and one. All right. First thing I like to do is a jerk bait. Very visual bait. Crazy colors. This is a six cents provoke. Great jerk bait. But there's one thing it's missing when you start getting a lot of short strikes. Take your black marker and draw a dot right above the treble hook right here. It can be an ugly dot, but you need a big black dot like that. What that is, that's a kill spot. And when that bait's rolling and flashing, it gives that bass something to key in on. And a lot of times he'll be hooked on that front treble. Make sure you all see that real good. Oh, marked on myself. That is the kill spot. Now, some jerk baits come with that. That color doesn't. Another thing, I brought an old spinner bait back to life. And what's been really popular is colored blades and i put a white widow blade on there because the water's dingy right now it's rising this is a half ounce spinner bait and i put this old school flared out skirt just to slip on uh, kind of a slaw they call it a slaw um the last thing very simple chartreuse dye take your stick worm whatnot give it just a little bit of chartreuse on the end there especially in this dirty water the longer you let it sit in your dye the more to be there 
and you should, may be able to tell air on the camera, maybe not, but it actually make a little bit more sharper stuff. You can tell it's impregnating into the plastic right now. That's three simple tips to add a little bling, a little flash, something different. What do we get? Did we get under a minute? I love it. A minute, 10, a minute, 10 seconds, we'll call it, right? Exactly Perfect. the same. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Audience, um, for you guys on YouTube, you can just comment uh, who's bedazzling you liked better. And on Facebook, you can actually uh, vote either heart for Travis or the little smiley face for Kevin. And as we're tallying up those votes and we're going to crown a champion, uh, I'm going to give some credit to Kevin's Bates. I really like that. Uh, that you didn't get to really, uh, you did a great job describing, but you didn't get to go into too much detail. But uh, right, guys, when those fish are going in to hit like a jerk bait and stuff, that little eye or that little black dot is something for them to focus in. They think that's basically the head of the bait. Mm -hmm. And when they hit that in the middle, you've now got your best chance of hooking up with that fish. You're going to have a higher hookup ratio for sure. That's an old school trick, man. The old school jerkbait guys, Mark Menendez, Randy Block, and those because they really believe in that dot. And I'm telling you, I've seen it in action. I, I think it makes a big difference. And don't leave it to just jerk baits. Crank baits and uh, wake baits are really key on that because a wake bait is going back and forth. And there's all kinds of pretty colors, but you don't really see the back. But putting that dot there on the side gives something that rolls in the water and flashes those fish key on. That's awesome. And then the spinnerbait thing, that's so great because we talk about spinnerbaits. Those blades are reflecting light normally. Mm -hmm. If you've got the, uh, you know, if you've got a gold blade or a silver blade, it's all about a little bit of clearish water. So you're setting off that reflection. But uh, having that white blade is going to throw the vibration that you see mm -hmm. and is uh, and is going to show up in that dingier water. So yeah, great, well great uh, extra little tip there. White and chartreuse, uh, they actually flash a lot better in nickel or gold, especially in, in dirty water. And I just, you know, I found a, I actually dug through my dad's tackle box a few weeks ago, and he had a bunch of those white blades and these little, you know, chartreuse blades. So feel free to uh, play and change up. I mean, the kicker blades on the Colorado spinnerbaits are real popular, but, you know, those guys up north, especially for smallmouth, they love those white chartreuse blades. Nice. And then you guys, there's, there's not a fisherman out there and I'll even that, that doesn't carry uh, some kind of chartreuse, uh, like a, a dye for their baits. Um, you know, Kevin had the dip. I've got some pens. I've got dip also in the boat and it shows up right when you do it. Like we couldn't see it on the camera that well on Kevin, mm -hmm. but if you put it in the water, it actually shows up even more. You can really see how vibrant that is. And if you chartreuse the tips of little crawdad legs or the end of your worm, you just are highlighting a little bit more action. And those fish can see that a little bit. And you just, I, I don't think there's many people that argue you get more bites at certain times of the year when you have that little chartreuse dye on there. Yeah. And a lot of that dye, uh, like the brand I use, this is uh, dying, dying to fish. Uh, it's made here in Paducah, Kentucky. I actually help these guys out do some dye, but it's got uh, what they call chartreuse garlic bread. So it has a scent to like cover up the the base scent of the dye. So you're getting two one stone. You're you're getting the color of your bait, and then you're getting some uh, garlic scent, which a lot of guys really like. I don't mind it on there. Uh, but one tip I will tell you, Travis, if you run out of pins, uh, if you got Q-tips around, keep some Q-tips uh, in your terminal box, and you can dip those Q-tips. Uh, in your scent, and you can kind of paint along. If you got swim baits or something, people like to paint a yellow line on their pearl swim baits. Dip that Q-tip, and you can spread it out there. You won't make a big mess in your boat. You don't have to worry about your pen drying out or anything. Yes, I love it. I love it, and that's and that's also great. Uh, not only with the the chartreuse, but you can experiment with different colors. You can put oh, little absolutely. red streaks down your baits and stuff. Uh, so you're adding scent and you're adding uh, some color with those Q-tips. There, there's your next LTV challenge. Who can paint the best bait using uh, scent or any kind of dye, you know, spike it, dye to fish, whatever's bait. out there. Like it. I like it. All right. So let's see. I don't know if I have the tallies yet. Uh, Kate and Rachel, do we have some tallies for the winner here? Okay. Uh, Kevin, um, uh, we're going to keep the voting open. I want you guys to vote in right now. Comment on, uh, YouTube, comment on Facebook. I've, I've just told that Kevin's winning by one vote. So we're going to extend it about another 30 seconds here and uh, and see what happens. But uh, 
you guys, uh, first of all, big thank you for Kevin coming on the show. And uh, Kevin, we're going to be doing some uh, more in-depth uh, tackle talk uh, later in the week on some of our different segments we're yeah. doing. And I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be uh, willing to come back on some of those and, and talk about some things. Yeah, we can do it, man. I appreciate you having me on, Travis. Uh, y'all can follow me here on YouTube, uh, just the Bateman TV. Uh, I got a Facebook page, uh, and y'all support Travis and all that too. He, he's a good guy, and uh, man, I'll talk tackle anywhere, anytime. <laughs> yeah, you guys, and he does do that. Bateman TV on YouTube is is definitely the best place to uh, check him out. That's where you're going to get the most in depth coverage from him. Uh, he is. Uh, he is one of the most detailed YouTubers. And if you just want to keep in touch with all the new tackle coming out, all the new techniques, if you just subscribe to one person, that's Bait Bad TV, you will be in tune with all that stuff. You will stay in all the up-to-date things because there's nothing he isn't um, figuring out and, and inquiring about and stuff. If anyone's winning a tournament on a certain bait, he's going to know the details and he's going to be letting you guys know what's going on. I appreciate it, Travis. All right, let's crown a champion. Who is it? Rachel, let me know. Ah, it's Kevin. All right. Get the dab. <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. The victory dance. Well, Kevin, thanks for coming on. I'm 0 for 1 on the Bedazzled Challenges, and Kevin's now undefeated. Uh, we'll see who the next guest is. I'm gonna have to get a I'm gonna have to get a, a sure win. I'm gonna just get right. some kid off the street or something. Well, off the that's, the, that's about the only three three I ever use. So if you challenge me again, you'd win by default. All right, Kevin. I think I'm losing you a little bit. Um, but Kevin, love you coming on. We're gonna have Kevin back on very soon. Take care, man, and be safe. Tell your family I said hello, brother. Will do, man. Thanks again, Travis. I appreciate you as always. Absolutely. And for you guys watching at home, if you've got any questions or comments, uh, write them down there. We'll make sure we're answering some of those. We always have fun interacting with you guys. And uh, I think we need to crown a uh, our first winner for the $100 gift cards. And let me see who that is going to be. Oh, I know who it is. Um, and I don't know if we have any pictures for that. Okay. And so just a reminder, guys, send in your pictures, hashtag them, Bass Money LTB. Our winner for the first $100 gift card is, he goes by the handle Bill Dance Jr., which I love. Bill Dance, one of my idols growing up, watched his fishing shows all the time. But uh, his name... Henry J. Holmes Jr. Got a great little Graham game going on. Uh, if you check out his Instagram page, uh, I like his organization on there. And uh, he sent in some cool pictures of a bait, uh, one of the crankbaits from the box and some fish that he caught. So congratulate, congratulations, Henry. You just won $100 part of our Lucky Taco Box stimulate, st stimulant package, I guess. I don't know. But uh, anyway, congratulations to you. Now, you guys, let's go through some memes. Uh, I, I I didn't see something funny. I just got beat on live uh, by Kevin. I'm, I need I need to now feel a little bit better. Let's let's look at some funny memes here. What do we got? How are we feeling, fishing, guys? This is how I was feeling yesterday, uh, and but then went out. I got to finally go fishing. This was how I was feeling for the last two weeks, and uh, not only did that I find a private lake to go, but that's where we came up with the idea of going, let's do a live show from the water. So all the people that are sitting around, you know, not only dealing with real life problems, but most of the time I know in my personal life, when, when things are going bad, when I, whenever I'm just feeling down, I've always been able to escape to go fishing. And now that's been removed from a lot of our lives. And uh, so that's why we're going to be bringing you every time I go fishing, I will be going live with you guys so you can at least have the next best thing. And, uh, and I hope to continue that for the next few months. All right. What else we got? No, no. Uh, months, and so that's going to go with uh, Big Fish. That first early morning bite. Oh, wow. Structure when you have fish like this. Oh, yes. Game out. The one that got away. Oh, oh, oh. oh did he come off? He came off. Oh, did you guys see that? <laughs> Monster, baby. 
And I don't know if we have volume on that one that we can play, but uh, I'm definitely guilty of the ones that get away. I feel like that was always the big one. That first early morning bite, oh, wow. Structure when you have fish like this, oh. Game off. Oh, 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 he come off, he came off. Oh, did you guys see that? <laughs> Monster, baby. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but yes. Every single one of those, I'm screaming out, that was a big fish. Some of those I think were huge. Some of them, I think, actually, I think they were all huge. But, uh, you know, we all have that buddy that every single time they catch a fish, get the net, get the net. And then you get the net and it's some tiny little fish. Uh, and it's just the way it goes. And I feel like we've all done that as well. All of us have always been a uh, huge fish. Oh, this one's huge. And then it comes in you're like, oh, well, it fought hard. <laughs> it wasn't as big as I thought. So, all right, what else we got? I've got a good story with this one. Happiest day of my life. Um, it's <laughs> So that's me in the background now. Um, love this meme. This meme actually uh, goes with uh, um, uh, my personal story. I got married. So, <laughs> so I got married on a Friday. On Saturday, we had a beach party with all the uh, all the people that attended and stuff. Sunday morning, I flew out to Vegas to go fish the U.S. Open. So, married on a Friday night, and I was fishing on a Sunday. And, uh, and so that, that really, that mean hits home to me. Uh, that's, and I think with all fishermen, uh, that's, that's something that we can all relate to because, uh, anyone who we marry has to understand that fishing comes with it. It's not, uh, it's not just a little thing we enjoy doing. It is part of the relationship and it's going to be a big deal for, uh, for the entire marriage. So. And now, Oh, 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 I'm either in a tree Oh, I got Snag. Right? Yes. Guys, this is, I've had some of my best battles with the bottom of the lake. And uh, including, uh, <laughs> including even trying to film videos that I've been screaming out, oh, good fish, good fish, good fish. And I'm reeling it in, fighting it. It's peeling drag as I'm reeling. And then all of a sudden I reel a little slower and it's peeling less drag. And I stop reeling and it's peeling no drag. And you realize you're snagged. You realize you look like an idiot and it's on camera and then you realize that uh, you have to show it. And so that was what that video was that uh, we definitely shared in on that. And maybe we can do some volume. Let's replay that. Let's replay that video with some volume. And that was the beginning. I don't know if that's playing on live right now. I don't know if that's been pushed over, guys. I'm hearing it in my uh, volume, but I don't know if you guys are seeing it at home. Um, but uh, that was that was actually the beginning of a great video. That's a nail weight video that we filmed. Um, guys, nail weight, fishing that Nico rig, fantastic way to catch fish, especially in the spring. So do we have any more? Oh, guys. All right. And so here's some clips, guys. I'm going to show you guys uh, some little, you know, as I'm out filming, always some interesting things happen out there. And I always let you guys know if, if the camera's rolling, I will let you guys see it as well. So you guys can have a nice little laugh at some of the struggles that we go through. So here I, uh, I got a lot of comments over the years. People say, hey, we want to see more videos of you fishing from the shore. We want to see more videos of you fishing from a pond boat. So I went out and I bought a pond boat. And, uh, and <laughs> it didn't come with all the parts. So, so the seat that I got wasn't connected very well. So I went to put screws in there. There's four places to put screws. There was only two screws. 
And so I went, uh, and so I was like, if I put the screws on opposite, opposite sides, that should be enough. And it was most of the day. And then one time I go to lean back to get something and wham, that's, uh, that's part of it. And, uh, so you would think, you would think that I learned from my lesson, right? I didn't. Um, I tightened those screws back up and the next time I went back out, uh, it happened again. And I finally went and bought four screws. And there we go again. And the only difference between that one is I had a buddy that was fishing, uh, right next to me and he heard, he wasn't looking, he just heard commotion and he sees my legs like up in the air and he was like, Dude, what's going on? He's rushing over. Are you okay? Are you okay? So I felt like a complete idiot. You can see there's cameras set up. You know, I'm trying to film a show. I'm trying to talk about what's going on and boom, I fall backwards. So I'm sure he went back to the uh, ramp and was talking about that, telling people what they saw me do, uh, what he saw me do out on the water. So, and uh, last time I went out, which was a couple weeks ago, I crashed my fourth drone, which we have a video footage of. And we'll put that up and I will walk you guys through this. I was going to land my drone and I was coming to bring it back down. It was way up in the air and I was coming to bring it back down to me. And, uh, and that's what's going to happen right on the left-hand side of the screen. And so I'm bringing it down. I stop pushing down and I'm not paying attention. And this thing just dive bombs into the lake. And, and I like, I was getting ready to jump in and it somehow just took back off out of the water. So now the, uh, so then I'm, trying to scramble on the deck and land it uh, because now I'm like, oh man, I have the footage. I need that footage on there. The drone might not work afterwards, which I still haven't tested it back uh, since it crashed, but I knew I needed that footage because I'd been filming with it all day long. And uh, and I've lost a drone in the lake before that I couldn't get. And I ended up losing the entire footage that I, that I needed to film those videos. So now here will be, uh, the next shot is gonna actually be the, the uh, footage from the drone's angle. And see how it starts getting kind of jittery? Like, look, it starts like kind of doing its own thing here. And then wham. But I am happy that this drone made it through because uh, I'm pretty proud that it was able to recover. That's a tough recovery, uh, taking a little bomb into the water and then jumping back out of there. So happy to have drone, but that was the fourth. This is my fourth drone. I thought I'd lost my fourth drone. I'm going to try to fly it here in the next couple of days and see if it works, but I've been letting it dry out. Um, but if it's uh, if it's has to be retired, oh well. That's the uh, it's it, it it did well for me for a little while, and that'll be number four. But anyway, guys, um, do we have any questions? Any questions you guys got? Um, well, guys. We're going to have more live shows throughout the week. Make sure you're checking in. The, uh, this whole idea is to just, um, you know, come up with cool topics, keep you guys entertained. Today, uh, Mondays are going to be a lot more casual. We're going to be introducing things that are going to be later in the week um, where we get a little bit more serious with stuff. But if you have, uh, I can't remember the email address, but if you have um, any kind of memes, any kind of funny fishing videos, send them in to lucky suggestions at luckytacklebox.com. And, uh, and we'll feature your memes, your videos, whatever it is. We'll feature them on these Mondays. We're going to have fun with it. Tomorrow, we'll be going live again, but tomorrow will be a little bit more of uh, a tackle and fishing related topics that we're going to go through the uh, back to the basics box where I'm going to go through some of those different baits and uh, go through some rigging stuff, answer your questions, and really more focus on fishing related things and, uh, and get a little more serious so that you can once you have the next chance to go out and fish, that you're going to be ready to do so and be have it all planned out. And then also this weekend, we'll be back on the water doing another live show from the lake. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in to yesterday's. I'm looking forward. We got a lot more things we're going to add. So I'm really looking forward to adding to this week after week. Once again, if you guys have any topics you want us to cover, make sure you send it in, get a hold of us some way and suggest it because this really is viewer run uh, live stuff. We take your suggestions and we go out and we figure out how to make them happen. So anyway, guys, 
Travis Moran with Lucky Tackle Box. Appreciate you guys tuning in today. Hit the thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel. And I will see you tomorrow evening.